Heavy eyelids can be a cause of concern in a lot of patients. Hi, I am Dr. Swati. I am practicing oculoplasty at Shikarai Hospital. Today, we will discuss about what is called a blepharoptosis or drooping of the eyelids. The normal position of our eyelids, the lower eyelid just touches the inferior margin of the cornea, the black portion of the eye, whereas the upper lid covers a little bit more of the cornea, about 2 millimeters. Now, our eyelids are able to move or rather we can blink because of a few muscles which are present within the lid tissue. So, there are muscles which help in opening the eye and there are muscles which help in closing the eye. So, whenever there is a disturbance or a problem within the muscles which are supposed to open the eyelids, that results in a droop. Why does one develop a droop? Many a times, ptosis is congenital, that is it is present since birth, wherein the muscle has not developed well or is underdeveloped. Now that results in approximately 1 in 10,000 of the population and that can also be familial wherein many members of the family can have ptosis. They not only have can have ptosis, they can also have a reduced width of the eye also or the palpebral fissure also. Ptosis can happen in adults as well or at any age. There are various causes for it. Sometimes a trauma can result in ptosis. Some of us using contact lenses for long time that also can weaken the muscles and result in ptosis. Post certain intraocular surgeries also one may notice a small droop in the eyelid. Botox given for other cosmetic or therapeutic purposes can enter the levator muscle or the muscle that elevates the eyelid and that also can result in ptosis. Any conditions which can be hereditary or acquired happening within the muscles can result in ptosis like one of the diseases called ocular myasthenia gravis and certain mitochondrial dystrophies. Ptosis can also happen when there is a problem with the nerve supply to the muscle that can happen post stroke, post palsies of the, nuzzle, of the nerves. This is commonly seen in diabetics and hypertensives. But overall, the most common cause for atosis is the muscle detaching itself from its attachment from where it is supposed to pull the lid up. So that is called senile or aponeurotic ptosis. What are the symptoms of ptosis? When it comes to a child, usually the parents bring uh, the kids to the hospital saying the eyelid is not opening well or one eye is appearing smaller than the other eye. Now, the child itself has a few tricks to be uh, able to use that eye in which the drooping is present. So the child may acquire an abnormal head posture. It may raise its chin up to be able to see through that eye. Sometimes if it's present since birth, there may be other associated uh, nerve abnormalities resulting in the lid becoming all right whenever the baby is sucking or chewing any food. Apart from that, uh, the eyebrows may get elevated also. All these things helps the person to be able to use that eye to see. In adults, many a times it's a cosmetic concern, but when the ptosis or the droop is significant enough, it blocks our upper field of vision or total vision. That apart, we can also uh, have dryness in the eyes. How do we treat the ptosis depends on 
why the droop has occurred in a child when ptosis is there what is more important for us is whether the droop is causing a vision defect in the child because that results in that eye becoming a lazy eye so whenever there is a droop which is significantly blocking the field of vision that is when it has to be lifted up as a temporary measure immediately if the droop is not so significant and it's not resulting in a blurred vision in that eye it can be observed because the corrective measures or the surgical outcomes in a child is not very predictable but whereas in an adult again medically if the muscle has slipped from its attachment we grade the ptosis and only if the ptosis is blocking your vision or your field of vision then it is indicated to tighten the muscle in case it's not it is left for the patient if it's a cosmetic concern we can still tighten the muscle or else it can be observed if the ptosis has occurred because of any nerve problems we collaborate with the neurologist and attend to it primarily and when once everything settles down and whatever is the residual ptosis is there that gets corrected now how is the correction done there are three different types if the muscle has a little bit of a potential or a little bit of a strength left it can be tightened now that surgery is the most common performed surgery wherein we all have a very prominent crease on the lid that is where we enter the eyelid and approach the muscle we tighten it with a few sutures and close the skin so when the wound heals the scar won't be evident if the muscle has absolutely no strength we have another option of using the strength of the eyebrow muscles so a silicon sling is passed from the eyelid and attached to the brow so using the brow's strength which acts as a lever the lid can be lifted up and down now when both these are not a possibility in certain rare conditions where not only the eyelids droop but the eye muscles also stop moving completely basically the eyeball gets frozen in such situations performing any kind of surgery may not always be a safe option it may result in severe dryness in the eye so we give what is called a crutch glass so the crutch glass uh, has a crutch which is placed on the back surface of the glasses it is mounted on it and when the patient wears the glasses it just pulls the lid up and this can be used as a temporary measure whenever the patient has to look forward and see a straight vision so uh, these are the most commonly performed surgeries and this is how a ptosis is generally addressed for any further queries you can always contact us at our hospital's website thank you